Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm back to massacre. I may perform some songs from our album Starfish. You know, when I grasp for anecdotes about Heyday, I can't really remember much. I just remember Peter Walsh from playing pinball. When I think about anecdotes of Starfish, it's almost like I don't know where to begin. Wow, what an adventure, crazy, ridiculous, idiotic time that was um, to be me and with my cohorts in the band. We'd been dropped by Warner Brothers after Heyday because it only sold 80,000 copies in America. These days, if you sold 80,000 copies, the president of Warner Brothers would come around in the limousine and give you a bunch of flowers himself. <laughs> In those days, $80,000 was an abject failure. Abject. Can you believe it? That was it. So we got dropped, and just when it all, everything was like one of those downs I was telling you about, it was like, it seemed like that was the end. After, you know, Heyday had already taken me back up to the crest of the wave, at least in Australia. And we'd done a bit of a tour of the world, we were doing all right. And then back, got dropped, there we were, sitting down in that trough, in the slump, riding the crest of a slump, we were. <laughs> we're down there, and um, we got signed up out of the blue by a big record company called Arista, and given the personal seal of approval by Clive Davis, who thought there was something vaguely good about us, and he was going to give us a shot. He threw a load of money at us. I didn't realise all that money, that's why I'm still... Can you believe this? I still haven't made a cent off that record because I'm paying back the cost to make it and the videos and then the records that came after it that sold successively less and less and less. Still, the massive success of Starfish is still paying off all that shit. <laughs> we did a tour of Europe once that lost 250,000 pounds. Can you believe that? And Aristus came in and went, oh, we'll fix that up. That's another 400 years the Kilbys won't make any money out of Starfish. <laughs> now one day, what a distant relative, uh, surely, that it will, that it will finally even up and, and I'll start making money and I'll send the check to my great, 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 um, What's that? It'll be in the public domain by then. It'll be in public domain by then, just like all those t-shirts. I, I buy my church t-shirts off, um, what are they called, Red Spot? Or is that the car rental place? If someone does all these great church t-shirts, I, I never think of doing them myself, and they're good. Um, it's public domain, baby. You can do whatever you like. So anyway, we went, we went to California, and um, we lived in Sepulveda Boulevard in the Oakwood Apartments. And Plug and I lived in our own apartment, and sort of across the garden was Marty and Peter, the guitarists enclave that looked down on the rhythm section who were, who were in the other place and Plume was full on fucking crazy um, and uh, we were each had our own car and we were driving around it was the time of the freeway shootings as well people were shooting at each other on the freeways in LA in 1987 and um, oh, the marijuana and the mushrooms and the cocaine just flowed as much as you wanted, you could have as much as you wanted, whenever you wanted, it was there. And, um, and uh, anyway, the first day we rolled up and uh, Waddy Wachtel took us into like an airplane hangar on a film set. And there were all these acts, actors and actresses going dressed up as, I don't know, fucking Hamlet or suicide victims or whatever. They're all, they're all walking in and out of this place looking for things all dressed up as kings and detectives and whatever. And um, there we are rehearsing. And for one month, he drilled us solidly on our pieces of music. We didn't have any words at this stage. We didn't have any words. We just had pieces of music that had sort of names. Anyway, um, there you go. And they didn't really get on very well with us. We didn't really get on with them. And um, it was a wonder that something good came out of it. But sometimes that how it how it is. You've got a bunch of long-haired yobbos from Bondi 
trying to go, yeah, we're all fucking, you know. And then you've got these others, no man, you're gonna make a real, you know, and somewhere in the middle, with us pulling that way, and then it was like what the, I think what the Australian Democrat Party was trying to be. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle, you sort of get, a, you get an actual sensible thing, uh, perhaps. Anyway, um, so we, we laboured on this record for three months, um, uh, living at the Oakwood Apartments, had zany adventures um, during the day. Um, Richard, Richard wanted to try all these Jamaican restaurants in downtown LA where we really shouldn't have been sort of but it was really funny, we'd walk in with our paisley shirts and Ploogie was, Plug, was such a dandy and we'd walk in and all the rasters would look at us and go, what? And the Ploogie would start talking to him and then it was like he was an old mate and we used to go down there and smoke dope and eat uh, Jamaican food and stuff and then go into the studio and there were these two guys who were diametrically opposed to everything the church had ever believed in were trying to make us knuckle down and do it properly and, didn't want it to speed up or slow down or any of that stuff. Anyway, out of the end of that came a record, went on to sell like a million copies. And uh, yeah, and one day, someone will benefit from that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, the first track on the record, the first track on the record, we had a fantastic, we had a purple patch and we booked this studio in Sydney and it was winter and it was rainy and the first day we were there we wrote a bunch of songs for this record just straight off it was really um that sometimes it came like that Priest Equals Aura was like that too um we just like we could just effortlessly write these songs nobody knew what was happening and everyone was like how did we do that and it's just all this song has materialized so a lot of the songs on the record just seem to fall out of the air. Um, the, um, the band itself, we were not in on bad terms in these days at all. Everybody was sort of on relatively good terms. Though, um, though uh, the guitarists lived in their thing and they, they did their thing and me and Plute tended to hang around. And I was eight years older than him, so that, that sort of was really a sort of silly relationship as well. And Richard was always like, so be, be doing crazy things and I have to be the parent. Oh, Richard, I don't think you should go and smoke crack with these people. <laughs> Just my opinion, you know. It's, oh man, come on, don't be so uncool. <laughs> so, um, and meanwhile the guitarist went and did some guitar -y things. Drove out for miles and miles to look at a Vox amplifier or something. <laughs> Anyway, um, so there we were in LA at the complex. Um, it was like, oh, it was so expensive to be there. Linda Ronstadt was working there. Jackson Brown was working there. There were all these Toto. It was all the cream of LA um, session guys and all that. They're all drifting around the studio. And um, Greg Ladani, one of the two guys, he didn't think very much of us. And um, one day he was reading Billboard and he went, Hey Woody, I see Billy, whatever his name is, he's working with Springsteen. And I went, yeah, and you're stuck here with these Aussie losers, aren't you? And he went, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't afraid to call a spade a spade. Um, and uh, he made me go and get singing lessons. And that was bizarre as well. Me and Peter Coppers had to go and get singing lessons. He went, hey Kilby, you need fucking singing lessons. I went, all right. And he went, what? I said, yeah, I'll, I'll go. Went, Will you? And I went, yeah. So we went to this guy and um, this guy, he was a really weird guy. And you sit there and you go, I never, didn't know what singing lessons were. And what it is, is a guy on the piano going, oh, try that, Steve. And then he'd say, hey Steve, do the girls in Australia have big breasts? I go, yeah, I, yeah, I guess they do. Really? Yeah. Okay, try this one, buddy. Oh, hey, do they have those topless beaches down there? Well, yeah, that's where I live in Bondo. Really? God, those topless girls. Oh, and you have 
this kind of like, I guess what would be considered very on PC conversations now with, with me. And Peter Coffey said exactly the same thing. Peter would go in and learn. And this guy, the strangest thing, his name's Mark Forrest, you can Google him. He used to play Samson in those biblical epics. He was like this really handsome, sort of beefcakey guy with sort of big mop of hair and he sort of pushed down the pillars, you know, the whole temple collapse on him. Or, or he'd play Hercules. And now all that work, it was sort of in these Italian sort of movies. And then that work had dried up and now in the 80s, he was teaching idiots like me to try and sing. And anyway, we went to these singing lessons, and then Greg Ladani decided, wow, you're really singing a lot better now, man. Like, it didn't make any difference at all. <laughs> I wasn't that sort of singer. You know, obviously, I'm still, I'm still not. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. He used to say weird things, too. He'd get in this, he said this, I wrote this in my book. I think it's birth of... This is worth repeating. This is what I'm going through. I'm sitting, trying, to, trying to learn to sing, and he said, Steve, a guy came around and fucked my wife and farted on my sheets. <laughs> Try this one, buddy. Oh. <laughs> and then he said the same thing to Peter Copper. So we were sort of, we were sort of nonplus. We didn't know what to say that kind of stuff. <laughs> what do you do? It's like we're Australians, we don't really say that kind of stuff, though. They do it. Anyway, um, yeah, we drove cars around Hollywood, we smoked dough, we swam in the swimming pool. Eventually, we made a record. That's probably enough talking for a while. I've got loads of anecdotes up my sleeve for this record, uh, which will come out in the course of this. And you'll stumble out into the night. Convinced that you got your money's worth. to that um, from the top, okay? Is that all right? I'm allowed to have one of those up my sleeve, aren't I? All right. I don't like to get the verses out of sequence. Here we go. You improve beginning. Our instruments have no way of measuring this feeling can never cut below the floor or penetrate the ceiling in the space between our houses some bones have been discovered yet our procession lurches on as if we have recovered Destination start to unfold. Your documents are useless, they forged beyond believing. Page 47 is unsigned. I need it by this evening in the space between our cities. The storm is slowly forming. Something eating up my days I feed it every morning It's not a 
religion is just a technique It's just a way of making you speak And distance and speed have left us too weak Your destination looks kind of bleak Your elements are burnt out Your beasts have been mistreated I'll tell you it's the only way To get this role completed In the space between our bodies The air has grown small fingers Just one caress, you're powerless Like all those clapped out swingers song I have so many fucking anecdotes to tell we could book the theatre for five weeks and I'd still be standing here moaning with on and on and on about this song and all the things that I said and he said and they said and somebody else said and all the people all the people who who you liked it and all the movies it was in movies it was in Miami Vice it was in Miami Vice when the hoodlums drive up to the jetty in their speedboat with machine guns and cocaine. This song's playing. It's in another movie where a giant bunny from another dimension comes to Earth with a future coming out of its chest. It's in movies at, at, at weddings and funerals and birthday parties and love making and sad things and happy things and Australian movies about the outback the flies and the sound of the dust. No, the dust and the sound of the flies. That's much better. There's this song. It's, it's a song, it's one of those, you know that aftershave you put on that smelled different on everybody? It's like one of those. It's like, um, this, you put this fragrance on and it has its own smell combined with your pheromones. This song was like, whatever you chose to do with it, and all, and lots of bands did it, and covers, and school choirs sing it. School choirs in Philadelphia, with little girls going, wish I knew what you were looking for. <laughs> and and um, a zoologist up a tree in Ethiopia, in a jungle, is listening to this song as she records the sound of the lesser spotted quarrel. And in the frozen north of Lapland, a guy on a sled's listening to it. And a guy in, 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 in I almost said Ayers Rock. Yeah, that, no, the, the, it's a guy there, it's, he's a ranger and he's looking at this, he's looking at it. And, and there's people remembering, you know, all these things. And it's all because of this song. And there you go, I'm about to do it for you. Um, I just, I just want to tell you a bizarre thing. Nobody liked this song, and when we got to that aircraft hangar, and we had a stab at doing it, no one really wanted to do it. And Greg Lally said, oh, do that one. You can go and do that one on your own. Because did, they didn't like it. No, I didn't like it. I didn't, I didn't dislike it, but I didn't care about it. I didn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't really, I didn't really want to do it. Our manager had heard it on a demo. I, I used to make these tapes. I'm, I'd, I'd write like five songs every week, and then I'd have a tape with all these songs. And I gave it to someone. I gave it to my manager. He said, "You smoky weasel." No, he didn't talk like that. He said, 
Well, you gotta do this Milky Way song. I can get this one on the radio. I don't like sickness, Steve. This one. I send you the Milky Way. You gotta do that. And guess what? In a complete conflict of interest, he also managed one of the producers. So he not only managed the band, but he managed the producer. It was kind of a bit of a man who was commissioning it all. You see, you see, you couldn't do that, could you, in a, like a free country like Australia? They wouldn't, they wouldn't let Guy Sebastian's manager manage, or Dennis Hanlon from Sony Music. Did you see the documentary on him? Dennis Hanlon? Didn't anyone watch that documentary? He, th he threw his phone at his chauffeur. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> anyway. No one really wanted to do this, I didn't really want to do it. So I was in the middle of all these big studios, was a little studio, and there was this what, well, you would have, I guess these days you call him a nerd. He had this brand new thing called a synclavia, and you could play any sound you like on it. It was like a fair light, but it wasn't so complicated to use. It was like a great big organ, and you pressed any button, and up came, this is pretty new technology in 1987, being able to do this. You could have any fucking sound you wanted at the press of a button. There it would playing perfectly all up and down the scale. It was just, it was an amazing instrument. And um, he and I, uh, I sat down and said, well, we've got to do this song. And I put down the guitar and sort of the bass. And it was just going to boom, boom, boom. And then we got to the middle of it. He said, what are you going to put in here? And I said, oh, I was going to write. I was going to write something really good in there. I was going to sort of try and come up with something sort of neoclassical or something. Not that I could possibly write anything neoclassical at all, but my idea of what I thought that would be, I don't know. But then I said, look, I'm just going to go. I just put that in there in the gap, whatever it was, 16 bars. And then we smoked some really good dope. And he said, ah, oh, you know what we should do to shit the guys in the control room? I said, what? He said, I've got some fucking crazy sounds here, man. I've got an African, African bagpipe. And go, Whoa. I said, fuck, can you play it backwards? He went, yeah. <laughs> so over the bit that goes, there's this thing going, as you know. Doing <laughs> that, right? We thought it was really funny. I learned to play it on my Persian cat eventually. <laughs> If you pull his tail and squeeze him, you you play along with that chord progression, you do a very good... I was thinking of bringing him on stage, but the RP, RP, RSPCA got wind of it and closed that act down. Yeah, look, um, anyway, we thought that would be really funny and um, to put this backwards African bagpipe in the middle of this song that we didn't think was going anywhere. So I did my bit. And we sent it up the line to Waddy Wachtel and the boys, and they liked it. They liked it. Mind you, this is a guy, if you listen to Destination, there's a lion roaring. There's this, if you listen really carefully, a sound you might think is percussion or something, it's actually a recording of the lion roaring. I said, I don't want a fucking lion roaring on my song. He said, put up with it, man. It's there now. And it's still there if you listen really carefully. You can hear the fucking lion roaring in the middle of that song, Destination. That's just how it, it was autocratical. No, he was autocratic. He, he was an autodidact as well, I think. At least that's what I thought. Okay, so Under the Milky Way. Of course, that's the song I'm talking about. I know you've been very patient. You wish I would just fucking play it, so it's coming. It's coming along right now. Um, I just want to tell you the end of the story. Uh, you probably already know it. Um, it was on the record and Clive Davis came in to hear what he just paid five gazillion dollars for and sat through all the other songs and went, yeah, 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 good, good, good. This song came on and he went, that's a hit. Shook my hand, all the guys as they left, that's a hit. 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 And they made it happen, they made, turned it into a hit. They took all the journalists to these observatories all around America, and they tilted them back in their chair, opened the roof and put fucking under the Milky Way on. <laughs> it was a hit. There you go, that's the story.
Tom's in this place gets kind of empty Sound of their breath fades with the light I think about Loveless fascination On the Milky Way tonight Lower the curtain down in Memphis Lower the curtain down on right Got no time Private consultation Under the Milky Way tonight Wish I knew what you were looking for might have known what you would find And in something quite peculiar Something shimmering and white It leads you here Despite your destination On the Milky Way tonight Wish I knew what you were looking for Might have known what you would find Wish I knew what you were looking for Might have known what you would find Something quite peculiar Something shimmering and white Leads you here Despite your destination On the Milky Way tonight Wish I knew what you were looking for might have known what you would find Wish I knew what you were looking for Might have known what you would find On the Milky Way tonight To the Milky Way tonight Under the Milky Way tonight They even had it, they were using it for an ACT. Did you, did, you, did you see that? They were using it for an ACT tourism ad. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> ACT tourism ad. They used it for two ACT tourism ads. In Garima Place, it starts off a lonely bus cut, and then it keeps on developing and more and more people join in and turns into reggae and ska and rock and roll and, and then there's a choir, they're all singing the song and then, then another ad, they came back, must have been a huge influx of tourists into Canberra, <laughs> probably visiting my old school and my old house, making a solemn pilgrimage, <laughs> seeing if any holy relics still hanging around. And uh, they used another ad as well, so there you go. Um, last night I was practicing that and, and my girlfriend said, uh, you keep speeding up and I went, yeah, I fucking want to get it over with. Right. 
Richard Plume was like that. He'd get tired of a gig and he'd think, if I speed all the song up twice as fast, I can get off in half the time. <laughs> did you ever s we did this recording once of Under the Milky Way in New York. And when, it, when I went into, it was a live one. And the, it was gonna be on this sort of live thing. And um, when I went in the studio, I was sitting, I couldn't sing it. It was too, this version we were playing live was so fast, I couldn't get all the words in. It was unbelievable how fast we used to play with Richard. Once when we landed in Hawaii, a customs man was looking for my bag. He said, who's got all the stuff that makes the drummer play fast? <laughs> you don't, they don't, fucking border patrol, they never come out with anything like that. <laughs> All right. I, actually, I've got a true story about border, border patrol. Is that what they call it in Australia now? No, what do they call it? Border force. Border. It's like serious. And I was there, I was there in, the, in the line with my British passport with all the other miserable foreigner scum trying to get in Australia. There I am standing there and all the Aussies are going straight through and I'm standing in this line. And I notice this guy sort of looking at me. And then he goes, you. And I go, me? He's going, you. And I go, and he's going, no, you. And right across the room I go, me? You. And he says, come in this line. I'm like, that's the line for people in wheelchairs and air hostesses. <laughs> he goes, get in this line. He didn't say, he was, he was gesticulating at me. Do you pronounce that with a soft G or a hard G? <laughs> gesticulating, I say. He gesticulated at me, standing in this line, I'm getting closer and closer, he keeps looking up, and I'm going, I think you've got the wrong guy. And, and then he goes, he looks at my passport, and he says, I've got two tickets to see you at the State Theatre. <laughs> I'm going, fucking hell. I was fucking angry. I was, I was really, I was thinking, oh my God, I've got some fucking gummies in my suitcase. For that. <laughs> I, I, what, would you get for, what would you get for a packet of gummies? None. Anyway, so back in 1987, the church are in Los Angeles making starfish. Right? Even the name. Arista didn't like it. Arista said, we want you to call the album, get this, Under the Milky Way, comma, tonight. <laughs> Not even just Under the Milky Way, I could understand that, or even Milky Way, Under the Milky Way, comma, tonight. And I said, no, it's going to be called Starfish. And they said, why? And I sat down and I wrote them a letter. And I got really stoned. I just wrote all this stuff. It was like sort of Andre Breton. You couldn't understand it, but it, it sort of felt like it had a lot of gravitas. <laughs> and I wrote this to No one could have possibly understood it. And when they read it, they went, okay. <laughs> and, and, then, and then again, they said, the funny thing, these Americans at this stage, these people, they, they weren't so big on language. One day we're in the studio, I'm singing this song, and the line is, admittedly, this is a very pretentious line. I said, it's an exquisite corpse and its lips are red. And Greg and I said, hey, Kilby, what's that fucking mean? What's a fuck, what's a fucking, what are you fucking corpse? What's that in this song for? I said, no, Greg, you see there were the surrealists. There was Andre Breton and Philip Soupard, and sometimes Salvador Dali. And, and, and Apollinaire and all these other guys, and they played this game called The Exquisite Corpse. And it's all like Chinese whispers. You start off with one, one phrase, and, they, and then another guy, and then they read the poem out at the end. And he turned to what he looked on and said, See, I told you I wouldn't fucking understand. <laughs> another time, another time we had a song, and I was leaving until the last moment. He said, Where are the fucking words? I said, I haven't got them yet. He said, What are you going to do? Just make them up? <laughs> anyway, 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 so we come to the third song on the album. I've never, I've never done this one on a guitar. I've been trying to get it right at home. Please forgive me, it's sort of like, it's, it, it seems like a bass guitar and a guitar would be very similar things, but sort of like, 
it's the sort of the movement, the way I play bass and the way I sing is this sort of automatic thing that I don't think about. But when I'm playing guitar, I'm sort of, I'm sort of quelling the bass playing instinct that's trying, and I, and I sort of, I trip myself up because I haven't played a lot of guitar until COVID. <laughs> I never used to play a guitar unless I was writing a song and I'd write the song like that, so put the guitar down and say, get a proper guitar and say, here, play this, I'll play the bass. So I hope I don't, I hope I don't fucking majorly fuck this song up for you. It's called Blood Money. Lined with dollars Mind and soul All kind of paper and now in cold hard cash Reaching the fire when you sit through the ash In the hand of blood money Still got a few bucks in it. <laughs> we'll try it again next year. Next year, I promise. If you come to my show, I'm gonna have that song 
ready and properly ready to go. And schmink and just like playing like Joe Satriani. <laughs> Right. Okay. Um, I have really forgotten. Does Lost come next? Is Lost the next song? Yeah. Or is, is that the last song? Is, do you know anybody knows anybody at all? Is it New South Wales, New South, East and West, or is it Lost? Which way around is it? North, South, East and West is the last song. Oh, so Lost is next. Yeah. Okay. All right. I was having a. I was, I've made like 500 albums, I can't remember the order they all fucking run in. Alright, so Lost. Sometimes I'm walking on the prehistoric skies I feel it's all beginning to rob it for my eyes I must go back, leave exile in my love but Here she comes with a penetrating stare I don't know when, I wish I knew where The calculation, there's not nearly enough Feel them sparkle like frosting. I'll down to worship some God. When it speaks to me, I wonder if that's all. And then he says, I'm never listening. The pursuit of adolescence is your butter and your bread. It's an exquisite corpse and it slips our bread. His teeth are this way. Please hang up. The lines are all crossed. South Wales, it's called, it's called an NSEW. One day, I, it, it appeared to me for the first time, everybody in the band when we were making this record, in fact, everybody in the band was all going in different directions with their lives. Uh, so we're like fucking north, south, east, and west. And um, it was really true for the first time, we were sort of been, we were sort of been hanging together mainly before that, and then it was sort of like everybody was doing different things all at once. And so we had this, they all thought that was really funny. So the, the phrase north, north, south, east and west was hanging around. We had this piece of music um, that Peter Coppice, we were standing in our arm. Um, we are standing in a sound check. It's another one of those sound check ones. We're in Dallas, in Texas. 
and we're at this club and we're doing a sound check and Peter Coppers just came out with the riff, sort of. Um, of course, I uh, saw 5,000 watts as he played with a stack of amplifiers and Leslie's. That um, sounded a lot, a lot sort of more impressive than my sort of 12 string version. It was quite galvanized. We all went, what's that? And he said, I don't know. And he said, okay, keep that one for the next album. So when, when we're putting the next album together, he said, I remember that piece in Dallas. And so I think it might have been called North, South, East and West. I'm not sure. Anyway, we brought it along and, um, and yeah, it was the last track on side one of Starfish. And the world's just a stage. The real estate's prime and the money plays right. Wear a gun and be proud, but get rest on allowed. Dream of the scam, ripping the plans. It's neither here nor there. Somewhere. I take my payment, I catch my fly. Don't wake up for me tonight. You might find me there. North and south and east and west. Have a quick phone, host your own show. To live from a land just off the ground. Guys with the brains are bitter and vain. You can hear no bad. North and south, east and west. Ought to be somewhere. North and south, and east and west. I take my payment, catch my fly. Don't wait up for me tonight. You might find me there. silly things are, or maybe they do. Maybe people realize how silly things are in the band. And, um, people don't realize how silly things are in a band. Um, and Marty have written me a song 
we had this new um, democracy where everybody was going to, the other guys were going to sing a song, and Marty had written this song. And Greg, it was called Spa. And Greg Ladani kept saying to me, Spark's going to be the single and you better get used to it. <laughs> and it really was fucking ruffling my feathers. And um, unfortunately tonight, I couldn't rouse myself to do a convincing version of Spa. And it's not, it's not for any, any other reason, I just didn't, couldn't really do it justice. So what I'm going to do, I thought this would be interesting to throw it open for a bit of audience participation. I'll do something else instead of Spa. Something not on this album. As long as it's not unveiled at the moment or almost with you, I'll do anything else in life. Sad. That one sounded good. You know what? Do you want me to have a crack? At, someone yelled out Aura. Do you want me to have a crack at that? Yeah. I've got a nifty little version of that on the tour stream. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just couldn't. I kept going, oh, I'm going to have to do Spark, and, and then I just couldn't whip up a good version of it at all. So best, best to leave it as it was, I thought. That sounds good for a start. <laughs> What's that? Why would I want to do it? <laughs> what a paucity of choice. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this brilliant track off Priest Equals Aura. It's working on so many different, yeah. it's working on the lyrics. The lyrics I wrote in an opium haze. Why I was the, I was, what's the guy who wrote The Ancient Mariner? Yeah, I was the Coleridge of, of Bondi that day, sitting in the studio writing these lyrics. And you want to hear I'm going to moan? Yes. <laughs> well, you should have come to my show last year, sir. Yeah. And I tell you what, I tell you what, because they're going to want to use that poster again next year, maybe if we're all still around and some new famine or enemy or climatic change or um, anything that else doesn't claim us, I will be back to do the best of the church and then you'll be rightly justified in demanding unguarded moment. In fact, this, this, um, it's all coming back to me. I was doing a show in Wollongong and it was the pre-sequel Zora when we were doing the three album show. And I was, we were just about to start Aura and this guy went, Unguarded moment. I said, I said, that's not on this album. And he said, we don't fucking care. <laughs> Philistines. All my life. Pushing against the Philistine. Alright. Tonight, no, there weren't that that's one. It could have been anything else of my nine thousand fucking songs. <laughs> We all came back from the war I wish somebody would tell me the score Greg told Poseidon over the coals Shook his shells, shaved his soles Where can a soldier fix himself a drink? Forget the noise, forget the sting The opium's running pretty low When the pain comes back, I don't want to Across yonder ocean, the natives are fierce Their lips are filled, their teeth are pierced It's not their spears, they spill your breath They kill their enemies by loving them to death Feel. I felt something soft go through my shield I felt something warm enter my guts I was bleeding bad 
but there were no cars. They captured three of us, took us back to their village. After a long, long time, I could decipher their language. They worship Baal, they worship the sun, they worship the sun, not the evil one. They were more than the racists, they sucked our ambitions, they let me go. I'm just one condition, that was when I came back to my native shore. I tell you, they don't want to play with us anymore. But a part of me will never be free. The part that's free will never be me. The thing of love and beauty is in my head. The message from our enemies and his or his head. They said that love equals faith. And death equals faith. An enemy always equals an adora. And priest equals aura. And time equals life. And life equals space. And space equals supply. And human equals race. And woman equals man. And pot equals pen. The fauna ought to equal the flora. I said the trees equals aura. And the beginning equals the end. And the end equals a star, and straight equals bend. The mind sometimes equals a heart. Yes, I knew equals me. The land equals the sea. Richer equals poorer. Our priest equals our baby. Taste when I come back into the Peace Equals Aura show, on my own. Every song will be that good. You'll forget all about Ungar's moment, I promise. All right, so that's that. Um, we have this other one in three, four times. Church only did two times, three, four, and four, four. We had this little, um, um, it got released as a single in Spain. And we turned up in Spain doing Spanish TV. Wow, doing those shows in Italy and Spain in the 1980s. Wow, that was a trip. We once went all around Italy staying in the best hotels, the sort of hotel James Bond would stay in. And all we had to do was gather in the market square every night, mime to our song, along with a whole, other, a whole lot of other bands. One of whom was Kajagugu. And there's this Italian girl called Sexy Girl. That was the name of her act. And she had a koala bear strapped on her back. And why? Like as a pseudo Australian, I, I sort of took a front to that. I thought, what the fuck you've got? It was like um, culturally appropriating a... Culturally appropriating a koala bear. You can't do that. But she did. Sexy girl. Boy, that was a memorable song she was singing. I wonder what she's doing now. She'd be sexy granny. 1986, we were round and round, round and round Italy for weeks on end, staying at hotels on the side of the Adriatic. One day we had a big smoke and we were right out. We were swimming, there were these ruined columns and the whole band was swimming around the Adriatic. And I said, well, lads, we can all relax because there's no sharks. And Peter Copper said, no, but there's barracudas. And we all fucking got out of the water by then. I could feel the barracuda, the Adriatic barracuda snapping at my ankles. And how sad the people in Australia, Steve Kilby, taken down by a barracuda in the Adriatic Sea on a promotional visit in Italy. It would have been a tragic way for me to go. All right, so um, we're up to the third song. No, we're up to the second song on side two of Starfish. It's a little three-four number. It was released as a single in Spain.
promo visits in Spain and Italy were a lot of fun. Got that, sorted, sorted that out. Now we're gonna have the song. <laughs> that didn't start well. <laughs> Do you always only assume that you're so well aware of what's happening right here in this room? You're just an antenna, you're just a wire. There's a thousand tongues wagging in your ears tonight, and you turn around. And you call me a lie Let me fade On the fire Lights can find you Have my way And the sunlight Will not find you Everything You say You disturb my slumber, you round up the numbers, you put them inside your velvet cage. Lightly babe, on the fine light will not blind you. Make my day, and the sunlight will not blind you. place in LA and we took work into the night and then we all go to Cantor's. Has anybody ever been to Cantor's or heard of that place in LA? And, and you go there after hours and it's kind of sort of guys from from rock and roll and sort of actors and people sitting around sort of having coffee and I guess there's alcohol there as well. I always used to have a hot chocolate and a toasted cheese and tomato sandwich. And um, we'd go there after hours, after we finished the record, we'd go around there. And um, I, of course, this was a long time ago when I was a young man. And there was, this, there was a girl there, and she, she seemed about six foot two, and she had a cowboy hat and cowboy boots. It was total, sort of cliche. She came over and said, Whoever your girlfriend is, I can fuck you better. <laughs> I, I thought that's sort of like an interesting way to 
begin a conversation. And I said, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, and, you know, things didn't all go well for them because when we got outside, I'm sorry to say she, she did a wee-wee in the gutter next to her car before she jumped in her car. And then we drove for ages and ages and ages and ages and got to her place. And um, I, uh, I, I said, I've got to use the bathroom. I went, in, I went in the bathroom. Oh, I forgot to tell you what was leading up to this. We had this piece of music. We had this piece of music. And Waddy Wachtel was calling it Stevie Nicks. He was calling this piece of music that was going to turn into the next song. He was calling it Stevie Nicks. I said, don't fucking call it Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks. Come on, Stevie, let's do Stevie. And he kept calling this piece of music that Church had, calling it Stevie Nicks. I thought it was the best track on the album, just about. And anyway, he was calling it Stevie Nicks. I couldn't write any words for him. And I was looking for words, um, which is really why I, was, I had gone to the girl with the cowboy hat's house looking for words. <laughs> no, no, just looking for a handy snatch of conversation I might. I might hear. And anyway, I, I was in the bathroom, have, just having a uh, sort of ordinary sort of wee wee, and I uh, heard, heard this noise behind a shower curtain. I pulled the shower curtain back, and there was a huge lizard in the bathtub. It was the last thing I expected to see. A huge lizard, like a kimono dragon or something. No, a Komodo dragon in the, in the bathtub, looking at me and licking, and then Penny dropped. That's what the song will be. It's going to be about a reptile. And I thought, you know, once she bought this and it was, it was this big. And, you know, it was probably like a little chameleon on her hand. And now it was like a fucking crocodile sitting in the bathtub. <laughs> lucky I, I was lucky. No, I was getting a bit Benny Hill now, this whole, this whole story. Um, anyway, I thought, you know, once it was that small and now it's so big. But she can't do anything with it because it, it couldn't live out in the outside world or anything. So, so I, I, I I went in the next morning out of the studio and I had the words already worked out. I thought this was good and didn't have to be called Stevie anymore. So I'm doing it like a, I'm doing not, I'm doing a sort of a quiet little version of it, obviously not doing the big rock and roll. Too dangerous to keep. Too feeble to let go You want to buy my head Should have stopped this long Go, go now, you've been set free Another month so you'd be gold You know me with your life Hey, smile I see you sliver away with your skin and your tail Your flickering tongue and your rattling scale You're a real rat time You were coiled around my arm How could you ever know I loved your diamond eyes But that was long ago gone now you've been set free Another month so you could go You know me when we love They smile I see you slither away with your skin and your tail Your flickering tongue and your rattling scale Yeah, you're real well, I should have believed you. She said, Steve, you better blow. She was the apple of my eye. That was long, go, go, now you've been set free 
Another month so you be poisoning me with your love Lady, smile I see you slipping away with your skin and your tail Your flickering tongue and rattling scale Yeah, you're real I saw your little bed, she's a new reptile. I saw your little bed, she's a new reptile. I saw your little bed, she's a new reptile. I saw your little bed, she's a new reptile. I saw your little bed, she's a new reptile. I saw your little bed, she's a new reptile. Contextualizing my song. Songwriters don't steal things, they just recontextualize them. <laughs> all right, well, we're getting towards the end of this record now. I bet you all thought I was going to not do Peter Copper's song, but I am. I am <laughs> going to do it. It's a great song and I love it. I was looking forward to doing it. Hmm. Peter Coppice and I knew each other um, since we were double booked at the church rehearsal hall in Lyon. What's that little church, that little stone church? St. Yeah, St. Ninian's. We were double booked. You used to be able to book that place for $2.50 and you'd go up to the minister's place and give him $2.50. One day we were double booked and he was down one end and I was down the other. I was in my glam rock band. He was in his sort of Santana-ish band. And we met and he was 18 and I was 19. And we were in a lot of bands. We did a lot of things together. And he was from Canberra too. He was Woden Valley boy. And we used to go fishing. Um, but in the days when I was a fisherman, we'd go fishing in his uh, Ford Escort with a load of guys, no seatbelts in those days. It'd be like 15 guys sitting in the back of a car, all playing around with their hooks and their sinkers and their fucking... It was very expensive sport. I thought music was expensive. Very... I used to buy these, they were called Baltic minnows, and go fishing with them. They were these things that the trout used to like, down in these streams around... Oh, where was it? Barrenjack Dam? And these places near Yass where Peter used to go, and we walk through these fields full of snakes and get there and you chuck one of these Baltic minnows in. They were like in 1974, they were like five bucks. So you could easily like really do a lot of, you know, like you hit, get one on a rock. Of course, the other guys, the other guys would um, try and wiggle around. I just try and use brute force, and whine and whine and whine. Once it came flying out, hit me in the fucking forehead, like David and Goliath laid me out on the pavement. <laughs> anyway, Peter Coppers wrote this song and, and it was on Starfish. I'm going to try and do a good version of it now because I really like it. Shaded crystal water Bathed in by God's daughter Whispers me a new season passes here. Butterfly gives you all who come. Soak up the stars and set it up. It's dreaded and wilder. Ageless, the child of the fire touch fire
red stands a tower in the distance. Dance pass like one snow on the face. It's a cure to conquer loneliness. It's strange and wilder, ageless, in childhood. Is a three down towards the mirror into darkness. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you, Justin Bear. I'm glad you got that one. Did you think I was going to try and worm my way out of it? Okay, so we come to the last track on Starfish. How's that? It's all over the last track. The last track on our uh, on our album went on to sell, yeah, a million copies in America and elsewhere. Did all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what can I say about it? it hasn't been said before. Um, after that, we went on a big tour of America. Um, and the album sort of went up the charts and the single went up the charts and sort of things changed from then on in sort of it sort of all it all started sort of falling apart um, I remember Peter Coppice one day he said I'll have to wait till I get home to post experience all of this it's like as it was happening you couldn't you couldn't sort of fathom it. it was, you just knew one day I'll sit there and ponder. What did that all fucking mean? It was a lot of sound and fury signifying nothing. Anyway, an amusing, an amusing anecdote. Um, when we were doing the Starfish tour, we had this band opening for us and the NME had just said, is this the best band in England? You know like those chemist warehouse? It says, you read from a distance, it says, the best, the cheapest drugs in Sydney, but then you don't read in small print, is. This the cheapest drugs in Sydney? And a small question mark. So the is a small. So this band were, is this the best band in Britain? And the band were called the Mighty Lemon Drops. Have you heard of them? Yeah. Do you remember them? Anyway, the best band in Britain didn't really like opening for a bunch of Australian hippies. I'll tell you what, when they were touring America and they did not want to open for us, and one day, a brawl erupted over chocolate. <laughs> Peter Coppice, Peter Coppice, he liked his Toblerone, but he didn't just like ordinary Toblerone. I'm sure it was he liked some of those dark ones with the or it might have been, there was some special chocolate that he knew and he ordered on his rider. And when he came off stage, the mighty fucking lemon drops were in our dressing room eating Peter's chocolate. And there was a lot of push, yeah, 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 what, come on, no, you. There was a lot of that. And guess what, we had a six foot, I'm not joking, a six foot six Lithuanian man called Big Mike who was our tour manager, and he just waded in like a bowling ball through 10 pins through the mighty lemon. 
And they and then dragged him off like under his arms. Like, we didn't take your fucking chocolate, you bastard! <laughs> and then they have gone, it's the only fucking one that trouble anyway. <laughs> Postscript. Years later, years later, I was doing a gig in San Diego and this little old English guy came up and said, Steve, 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 yeah? Remember me, I'm Dave from the Mighty Lemon Drops. <laughs> I said, where's my fucking chocolate? <laughs> and then we had Peter Murphy opening for us. He really didn't think he should be opening for the church. He really didn't like it. And one day we went backstage and there was another scuffle over something. And Big Mike went for him and he went, keep that man away from me. <laughs> these are the things I remember. I don't remember the crowds. I just remember all these, when I think about gigs, I just think about the stupid things that happen backstage, you know. Anyway, well, we're drawing to the close of my misty-eyed, rosy-glassed reminiscences, ladies and gentlemen. I really thank you sincerely. I realize you had a lot of other entertainment choices in the ACT tonight. <laughs> Truly, I, no, I know you did. I know there was something interesting happening up the Malonglo River, and you chose, and you chose. <laughs> I, I've got one more, I've got one more reminiscence that doesn't have anything to do with anything. A guy told me there were lots of beautiful girls at the rowing regattas. Remember that King song? Here it comes to our regatta. Remember that? I didn't know what a regatta was when I first heard that song. Anyway, I got in the rowing team and for some crazy reason, at four o'clock in the morning, in the middle of winter, I'd be on Lake Burley Griffin with all these guys rowing a fucking boat. It was freezing cold and there was a Swedish guy who wouldn't stop talking and there was a bully down the back called Fez Downs, and Strom was going, Stefan Strom, my Swedish friend who was right up the front, he was rowing along going, I don't know why I fucking do this, I don't like rowing, why the fuck am I here? He was going, shut up Strom. <laughs> yeah, I don't fucking know, I don't. And, and he said, shut up. And then suddenly the boat stopped and Fez Downs walked right, and then all the rowers got out of the way and came right down the front and punched Strom out, and then went back and we carried on rowing. <laughs> It was, that, was a, that was the thing, and every now and then you catch a crab. That's the worst thing ever. You catch a fucking crab, the, row, the oar would stick in the water and it hit you in the chest. And guys, it never happened to me, but winded me a few times. Guys would be lifted out and thrown right out. And I was just thinking about the Malonglo River, and we were rowing around at fucking five o'clock on a misty morning on Lake Billy Griffin, and we came across these sort of foreign gentlemen who were sitting there fishing, smoking cigarettes. And we rode up alongside him, and Fez went, hey, give us some fucking cigarettes. <laughs> and the guys went, no, fuck you. <laughs> and so we turned the boat around, and we slapped the water with the oars and drenched these guys. <laughs> and they're sitting there with their cigarettes wet, just sitting there in their fishing rods, totally wet, when we suddenly drenched them and laughed, and then took off. I don't know why I remembered that just now. <laughs> The Malonglo River, yeah, it's sort of all these associations. Um, all right, look, I really want to thank you so much for coming along, uh, making, when I, was, when I was at school, I wanted to show them, now here I am at Belconnen fucking theatre for my second time. <laughs> playing, I've made it, I've made it. It's a dream come true. Seriously, I hope I can come back next year and do something else. Yeah. All right, okay, so with, here we have the last song. It's a little song called um, Hotel Womb. And as I said, I'm very appreciative. I'm glad you came along. I've had a really good time. This is a really beautiful theater. I'm not just saying that because I want to come back next year. It really is a, a beautiful theater. It's comfortable and it's got great lights and great sound. The people who work here are really great. I really like Canberra. I regret that I ever moved away. I'm looking to rent a, a granny flat in the uh, Monica area. <laughs> I've said to my girlfriend, don't fucking say Manuka, because the Queen does not like that. <laughs> say Monica. Now I go in a, I go in the chemist and say, have you got any of that Monica, honey? And they go, what? 
a little granny flat in Manuka or Yarralumla. <laughs> within striking distance of Parliament House when I make my run in 2024. <laughs> Block out the sun Down in the lair Well I met her there With a prize for everyone I paid eighty dollars for my wedding ring Never take it off If I try Cactus short tastes Strangely sweet It goes down inside I dream of sex In my hotel room Soft and so made, it's a wonderful room. The sudden bullet in the night, with the rainforest go. As we float downstream to the Amazon River, where the black waters swell. I said, Why are your people wearing those masks? I said, Can we be reconciled? She says, The mother of the storm going to roam the sky. Searching for her child And I dream of stay In my hotel room Soft dance on me It's a wonderful room Yes, I wish I'm back In my hotel room Then I slip through the crack To that wonderful room And she's lying by my side She's got the face of this widow that keeps following me She's got the body of my bride I say, why are those buildings swaying like trees? Can we stop for a while? She says, why can't you hear the city that's hidden in there? It's just another mile And I think I'm safe in my hotel room and so made this a wonderful world Yes, and I wish I'm back in my hotel world And I'll sit through the crack and smack to that wonderful world Hotel world In the hotel room. People, thank you so much for being a wonderful audience.